Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're doing something a little different today. We're fishing largemouth bass through the ice in Hayward. Yeah. <laughs> Dion, Dion. These fish are all in our harbors. Close to 14 there. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, this is kind of a special day for me. I'm up in Hayward fishing with my buddy Pete Mena. Hey, you got your whole family out here today. We got the kids here today. Esther's out of town, so I'm babysitting the dogs, and we're bringing them along ice fishing. Okay, let's meet them now. This is? That's Moses. He's a flat coat retriever. This is Maven, standard poodle, and another one, Missy, standard poodle. Missy, get out here in front. Come, come on, on, Missy. Let's, nah, come on, don't be camera shy. No, but seriously, uh, Esther's out of town so we're gonna tip up fish today and we'll talk about that so you're responsible for the for the kids here yeah for the kids and they do prefer tip ups they don't like jigging much so they'll chase a tip up oh yeah yep now, now let's talk about this you know over the last couple of summers you and your dad and i and blake have enjoyed some of these backwood lakes up here in the hayward area and you came up with the bright idea Let's ice fish for largemouth bass. That'll be fun. Yeah, well, you got to try it. And what's interesting this year, I mean, normally the oxygen levels would be down a little bit. Just in general, largemouth bass don't bite all that well through the ice a little bit first ice. But uh, I think they're still going to bite pretty good because the oxygen's up high with all the warm weather that we've had. So we're going to give it a try anyway and see how we do. Well, it's fun coming back to these lakes that don't have any houses on them. You're really in the wilderness. Yeah. And actually driving back on those logging roads, to get in here is part of the adventure, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it is so nice to, you know, have, have the quiet and literally not see anyone anywhere, no homes, no nothing. We got a text on this today, Steve Salisbury, our buddy Josh, and Ryan, the photographer. We're going to have fun. And we're going to eat brats. And we got the dogs. Yay! Yay! Hey, folks, the show we're using and how we're using it, all of that coming up right after this. Oh my gosh, oh, yes. look at the head on that. Oh. And look at that mouthful of weed. Yes. Look at that pike. Oh. Are you having fun with the tip oh, Having a great time. Love Beaver Dan. Oh, look at that, Blake. Oh. Holy Hi, cow. Oh my God. Look at that pike, Blake. Oh That's my cool. gosh, look at the size of this oh. pike. Oh my gosh. It's that is a trophy cool. pike right there, pal. Oh. Oh man, is that, that gorgeous. Look at this guy, folks. This is a beauty. <laughs> Wait till you see the tummy on Look this the guy. Oh, oh, nice bass. <laughs> I'm bullet. Look, pull that yeah, up. There you go. You've proven that that will call fish in. Yeah, there's no no. Oh my oh. gosh. Oh, oh, oh look oh, at yeah. that. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. You know, they come in and what we do is we, we, again, we want to hear their story. We want to make sure they're okay. We want to give them guidance. A lot of times we call it quarterbacking their case, right? Help them put themselves in a position where they can get the best medical treatment they're taken care of. What we want to do is make sure that the only thing they have to worry about, John, is getting better, right? And we focus on everything else. Hey, welcome back, folks. As we talked about, we're tip-up fishing on a backwood lake up in Hayward with the dogs and with Pete and with Tex and with Josh and with Steve. And uh, the tip-ups are kind of interesting. You you love just using a golden shiner and and you love the sound bullet. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Especially when uh, you know I'm trying to draw the fish up high, which I'm doing here. I'm actually fishing right underneath the ice. The lake isn't real deep. You know, we're going to be in about 10 feet here, so. But I am keeping it up high, and that's where that sound bowl it really helps. That's kind of nice about fishing these backwood lakes. They're basically the same depth all around, so it's not difficult to set tip-ups. A couple feet under the ice, and you're nope. good to go. Yep, away you go. You got one, hey, 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 
We don't even have all the tip-ups set yet. My buddy Josh Tigan, what do we got oh, here? Oh, it's a nice one. I've been Seriously? playing for a little bit, yeah. All right, that's so cool, man. I got pretty light line on, so I don't want to yeah, be too careful, much. Yeah, be careful, be careful. Even though they don't have teeth. Oh, that's a that. nice oh, bass. Look at the size of that LMB. That's a giant. That is a gorgeous fish. Jeez. And you know, folks, you know Josh. He's been on our show for years. But you do a lot of guiding on these smaller lakes up in the Iron River area. And you get a lot of bass in the wintertime. We do. It's a great bite. You're busy chasing flags all day, and you can catch some pretty big ones. And they're active. You know, a lot of people think they just go dormant. But uh, they bite during the day, don't they? They do, especially early ice and then late ice again. But, yeah, that's a giant. That's a great way to start Look the Look at the beautiful coloring on that just fish. beautiful. Really gorgeous. Giant mouth. Do you have all your tip ups in yet? No, I only got a couple in. I mean, I literally <laughs> just set this one. That is awesome. Hey, yeah. Pete, come on over. I got one here. All right, yeah. buddy. Hey, hey. Oh, Look at that. Now, I got to tell you, you were over setting tip ups. Josh got a beauty. Did but he? Yeah, yeah, pushing four pounds. I've seen you guys hollering. I heard you hollering. Good to see all the different sizes, you know. Oh, yeah. You got all different sizes in here. And here again, now, uh, we aren't keeping any today, but bass are actually good. Oh, I love them, seriously, and especially in that 14 inch range right yeah. around there. Got one, John. I don't want to run the dogs over. No, don't run over dogs. <laughs> Esther will be very upset with you. Oh, that's a Ooh, nice one. That boy. is a beautiful fish. Dandy fish there. Yeah. You know what? That. I, the one that Josh caught too. The spectacular colors on these fish. They really are pretty here. They're all a little different, but those stripes are. Uh, most of them are real vivid. That middle stripe. Hey, Tex, we got a Tex. There's a tip up there, Tex. Ah! All right, there we go. My old buddy Tex Mana, one of the all-time greats. Anything there, Tex? Looks like it. Yeah, yeah you got him? Yeah, got All right. Him. Way to go there, Tex. Let's be a big old bass. What do you mean? Oh, That's a pretty oh, bass right there. Hold on to him there, buddy. So I got to come up there with you. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Hey, you and I are getting older. I got to need some help getting up once in a while. Me too. <laughs> yeah? How old are you now? 83. You're 83, so I'm 73. We're pretty much the same. <laughs> I'm... Age-wise. <laughs> Hold that up, though. That's a nice bass. Hold him I... up, Tex. The difference is I'm a lot prettier, though. Well, <laughs> you're a lot prettier. That's so true, though. What's going on here, Pete? I, I, I see Tex over here bowing to it. He's jigging for uh, bluegill, I think. Bluegill I, jigging, and you got some. Oh, look I at this. Look at that. <laughs> hey, you got that up fast. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. Come on up here, Pete, if you would. Yeah. No, I look over, he's battling the fish, and you were bluegill fishing, yeah, huh? Yeah, nice well, little waxy in there. <laughs> Did you see that come up on your hummingbird, your locator? Uh, oh, yeah. Did yeah, you? actually, it was neat. You could tell it was a pretty big fish. Oh, yeah. About the, uh... Isn't he something, though, how fast he got that fish in? <laughs> I thought, yeah. I, I thought I'd come over here and, you know, I'd have to yell at him. And... Well, he was fighting it for a while. <laughs> Otherwise, if you'd have got here sooner, you could have gave him Tex, it's a half-hour show. <laughs> you know, hey, Pete and I were talking before about how Let people don't go. think largemouth are any good to eat. Yeah. I'll tell you what, in the springtime, I go out and catch those 14 inches. Yeah. They're good, aren't they? Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, look at that, Josh. Come on in here. We got Steve Salisbury, our musky buddy. Yeah. And what do we got here, Steve? Oh. Ooh, <laughs> that is way off to the side there. Here he comes. And oh. whoa, I heard that ice crack a little. Oh, oh that's, that's a nice, nice bass there, there Steve. All right. Hey, you know, this guy's quite the musky angler. Did oh, you? he is, for sure. And you, and also, hey, we, we got to put in a little plug for your custom rods, right? Sure. Okay, well, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little about your rods. They're homemade rods. Homemade rods, Great North Custom Rods. Make them one at a time. And uh, 
just a little guy in the basement making you know making a few rods here and there so yeah no they're very Everything. good rods have you yeah. used oh, it? i have I, yeah i love them they're his great. sucker rods are awesome for muskies yeah, too i use his trolling rods they're amazing so where can people find out more about your rods uh, best there? place is great north custom rods on facebook great custom great, rod. great north custom rods great north custom rods on, on facebook. facebook right That's now the best way to find us. i see why those single hooks are nice to get hold them up there will you you know got to be proud of that yeah, fast good fish yeah how many winter bass do you catch? Well, today we're catching a few. Yeah, no, it's actually pretty good. You know, Pete was uh, out on this particular lake a couple weeks ago, and he said that he couldn't keep up with the flags. Hey, but we're getting one every what? Yeah, every, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes we get a flag, so. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. It's the end of season sale, and you can save big on ice fishing gear. Like 20% off all ice shelters. On sale starting at one nineteen ninety nine. Hurry, it's only while supplies last. Here we go, John. Come on, come on. I got the best job of all today, <laughs> running around on my Yamaha watching you guys catch these bass. Any size, Josh? Uh, this one doesn't feel as big, but man, was that tip up spinning fast when I got okay, up to it. Okay, well, let's see here. Got leader. Here I got coming. a pretty long leader on here, so. Well, oh, he's not a not yeah, That's a nice one. Come on up here, buddy. Yeah. Hey, you know, one thing I want to talk about, and uh, you know I talk <laughs> about fishing largemouth through the ice, but you guys got a pretty unique su situation up where you guide in Ashland there on Chiguamagon Bay, where you can guys can actually uh, target smallmouth through the ice, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll target them, especially late in the season. You know, they group up, they're schooled, they're they're aggressive, and it's it's a lot of fun. Now, when guys do the bass fishing through the ice, they actually use a smaller profile lure a lot, don't they? Generally, the smaller, the better. You know, they're not as aggressive as they are during the open water season, so you got to go small. And mainly in the winter, they're feeding on small bugs. Oh. So you just want to imitate that, and you'll catch a lot more, but very slow. It yep. sells very again. It sells very again. Josh, come on in here, buddy. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I got that Yamaha today because we're getting a lot of flags and we got a pretty good spread out here. Did you hear that ice crack? I felt the ice crack. Are yeah. you okay? Oh. Here he is, here he is. There you go. Another bass. Yeah. I, aren't you impressed how active bass are? This, I am. You know? We're getting a few of them, aren't we? Yeah, hold them up, you know. There you go. Uh, not yeah. a big one. No, a little small one. We were fishing the lakes of Hayward, Wisconsin, a five and a half hour drive from Milwaukee, six and a half hours from Chicago, and three hours from Minneapolis. I'll be your beast of burden. A friend in unfriendly situations. Stumps, roots, rocks. Throw me in and watch me swim. Mother Nature may be tough, I'm tougher. I'll take you with grit and guts, beat, glitz, and glamour, where the fish are worth the fight. If you ask me, the bigger the question marks, the better the quest. Folks, I drive 40,000 miles a year. I use Amsoil Synthetic Oil for two reasons. I don't have to change my oil for 25,000 miles. My truck runs better and I get better gas mileage. Folks, you, you see us talking about the Johnson Pump washdown kit every week. On a charter boat, pontoon boat, any boat, it's really a great thing to have. Now, you guys get a lot of blood on your hands, we so do. what do you do? John, this washdown pump right here, the Johnson, just spray it right off. And obviously, you got quite a bit of blood on the back deck, and this thing will take care of it. So you actually use it while we're out here fishing so the customers don't get blood and everything on them. Exactly. And again, that's the Johnson Pump washdown kit. You yep. love it? Love it. Here we go, John. I'm coming. All right, Josh, a roo. Nice head shakes. Okay, here he is. There's and... a sound bullet. Oh, oh yeah, there you there go. go. A little better. Uh, again, I, I cannot believe how beautiful these fish are and the colors. And they are pretty. You get a lot of lakes up here that have stained tannic water, and they, they develop these colors, don't they? Yeah, they really do in these, these waters. But, yeah, just a beautiful fish. So I was going to ask you, you know, most of these lakes don't have a deep hole. You know, it's just kind of a big flat type deal. Yeah. So if you got eight feet of water, how far below the ice are you setting your tip-ups? I always like to set mine up. I always set them a foot off the off the bottom, especially with bass, because you know they're not like 
take a pike, they're not going to come up five, six feet to, to hit them. Right. Um, so I always like to put them about a foot off the bottom. Hold that one out. I mean, that's not a bad fish right there. Oh. And uh, the first one we caught, like I said earlier, yeah. has been the biggest so far. But again, we're midday here, and uh, hopefully we're going to get a bigger one or two. But who cares? You know, this is the type of fishing that's fun, folks. you got action all day, right? It really is. You're always chasing flags, and like you said, I'm sure, especially when we get a little closer to dark, I'm sure they're going to fire And we're not them. hurting these fish at all. They no. release perfectly, yes, right? Yes, they do. Yep, shallow water. A little hook. Back. Boy, that was spinning, wasn't it? I oh, saw yeah. you running over here. Oh my gosh, did he take out some line? I already got a pile of line here. I have no idea if it's a big one, little one, but he was sure motoring. Yeah, that isn't, oh, no, I gosh. saw that spindle going. What does he feel like? <laughs> Let's <laughs> he see, feels, here he comes, here he, he comes. He decent. There's finally the leader, the sound bullet. Oh, he's all right. Oh, he's that's not a, a monster. Oh, no, that's a nice bass yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. We got quite a spread here today, and we're on a small lake, but it seems like every this end of the lake has been the deal. You know what? That's interesting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we've, we've not had nearly as much action over there, so it has been mainly here. Now, when you have that situation, do you think about moving more over here? Or? That might be worth a consideration. We got a little water in front of us here and behind us. We could do that. You know, Tex, we've been cooking Johnsonville's for 23 years now when we go fishing. <laughs> Pretty long time, right? It's a long time. And, you know, I kind of took a survey. Uh, who was our best taste tester ever? And you know who won? Yeah, Tex, you have been voted the best Johnsonville really? taste tester ever. Oh. Now, I know you're thrilled, but here's what I got for you today, okay? Mm -hmm. These are Johnsonville Fresh Brats. These are your favorite, right? right? And I've told you many times that when you cook these, you got to be careful. You got to put them on low to medium heat. Make sure you turn them every four or five minutes until they're golden brown. But be very careful with these. You don't want to uh, to break those skins. You don't want to lose those Johnsonville juices. That's why you cook them on low to medium heat. All right, now you learned how to do it. Let's see. <laughs> well, wait, wait, what, what was that? What? Say that again. No, those are Red. wonderful, and I know the Mainas love their Johnsonville. Hey, folks, look for Johnsonville Fresh Brats at your favorite retailer today. Oh, there look you at go, you know you can't you know we're tip up fishing and look at what he's doing. Well, you gotta yeah, try. He, he and your yeah. dad uh, right. sitting there jigging away. Feel yeah, good? Yeah, yeah, got one. Right. Oh, there oh, you go. There oh, that's a nice bass there, Josh. Yeah. On a little spoon, huh? Yeah, little spoon. Fun now, on the jig rod. Now you, I saw you staring at your locator over here. What happened with that deal there? He was so finicky. I mean, he came up to it, went back down to the bottom. So then I went back down to the bottom. I bounced a little bit in the mud, and then he came back, and then he left again, and then the third time he came and just nipped it. I mean. They're very finicky right now. Well, we just had our Johnsonville's, and Pete made, made a remark. We first got out here this morning, we're getting a flag every five minutes, but this midday deal has slowed down, huh? Well, at least for now, obviously. And, you know, the way that fish reacted, there's no doubt. And the flags have been slow. I don't know. I, you know, I think we'll get another window, but uh, they're, they've slowed down. So when they're aggressive, they'll just come in and smoke it? Oh, yeah. Yay! Got him, bud. Yay! We got him. Well, Josh just got one on the old jigging rod, it's and right at me. Salisbury's got one yeah, going here. Yeah, all right. Go, oh, that's an I can Come on up one. here now, can you? There we go, you know? <laughs> You're not as bad as I am. I have trouble getting up. No, but like you said, Pete, you know, that we'll get an after another window. Maybe it's starting now. But one thing, you know, you and I have talked about this before, fishing in snow like this. Does that affect the fish, do you think, much? Uh, I don't think it bothers them much at all, John. It's a little different than, you know, we talk about that stuff in the summer where, I, you know, it, it's making a lot of disturbance on the water. Right. I think that messes fish up, but the snow itself shouldn't be a problem. It's a little bit harder right now. But it'll be interesting. It's something no, I... No, no, we got to see oh, it. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you know, you yeah. got to hold them up there. We didn't get a look at that. Right. But so seriously, <laughs> they're, they're under the ice, right, the fish? <laughs> oh, yeah. But we'll see if it, you know, if it picks up or, you know, slow 
goes down with the more snow and it, if it stops snowing we'll kind of pattern it from there are you having fun today it was a blast isn't it? Well, now you can let them go now we'll everybody's go seen it yeah, yeah there you go <laughs> Hey folks, the Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2024 fishing contest is underway. To enter is simple. Just snap a picture of your trophy catch and go to any Fleet Farm store to pick up an entry blank. Or you can go to fleetfarm.com to download an entry blank. Each week, I shop online at fleetfarm.com to check out the latest deals. It's the end of season sale and you can save big on ice fishing gear. Like ice augers, they're all 15% off. Ice locators and underwater cameras, they're also all 15% off. Hurry in, it's only while supplies last. Hey, hey, Josh Tygen here. You know, I guide all winter long in some very harsh conditions on Lake Superior and on the inland lakes. And one product I use a lot is Amazon Quick Shot. This allows me to keep my machines running smoothly all winter long, even in the worst conditions. Folks, we're at Clam Headquarters in Rogers, Minnesota. And Matt, I take a look around. You've got so many different combos, right? Absolutely. From panfish to walleyes to lake trout, from novice to expert, we got you covered. Yeah, I love this yellow one. What is this one? This is the Voltage. It's great. It finds a lot of kids' stockings at Christmas. Obviously, it's eye-catchy. All the great models and actions and very affordable. I used this last year. Great for panfish. Now, what is this one? This is called the Dead Meat Rod? The Dead Meat, the idea is to be the all-purpose dead stick. So whether you're fishing walleyes, big game fish, or perch, it's very durable, it's very effective. It's got a limber tip and a solid backbone. Now, the Bravo Series. This is kind of a neat thing you guys are doing this year. Yep, so the Bravo Series is new. It looks really sharp, comes in a nice, neat package, all the great actions. But one cool thing about the Bravo, it's part of the Folds of Honor, which means a portion of the proceeds go back to our veterans. And I want to say once again, folks, Clam has a combo for everybody, right? You got it. To check out our full line of ice fishing products, go to clamoutdoors.com. Boy, it has been a while. I John. was just going to say, <laughs> you know, when people watch our show, they see us bringing in one after another, and it really hasn't been like that this afternoon. Well, kind of a dry spell. Uh, there you go. Now, there are a lot of these 14s, a lot of these fish in that yeah. size. But no, people, pretty, pretty people again, watch though. the show and they see us bringing one in every minute or two. <laughs> we've relaxed for about the last hour, right? Yeah, we've been getting in some catching up, some mm. chatting, some old stories with text. I hear you guys talking over there, but uh, it's still all right. But yeah, definitely a lull. I would say 45 minutes without a flag there. But you know, last time you fished this particular lake, you came in the afternoon and, and that last two hours is pretty amazing right? yeah hopefully we got a flurry here we still got time but uh yeah it, it has been pretty slow is this the beginning of the evening bite i sure hope so because yeah it's been a slow couple hours oh it has been nasty it's getting closer all right doesn't feel super big not too bad it's kind of about the average size still fun you know it's kind of interesting you talked about everything has been on this side of the lake i said to pete before i said do we start thinking about moving tip-ups this way yeah i mean we could what I like, I mean, especially with lake like this with not a lot of structure, I think it's almost better just to keep them spread out. Do you? Because, I mean, they're going to keep moving, so if you have tip-ups super close together, that tip-ups, they're probably going to catch the same fish as they're swimming through. Flag! Flag! Hey, not finally. spinning. Oh, oh Josh, spinning. the pressure is on you. We have missed it's three it's in starting. a row, Josh. We're hilly on you. Oh, oh we got a nice. connection there. It feels all right. Josh Tigan coming through in the clutch there. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it. how many have we missed, you guys? Uh, quite a few. Yeah. Captain Hook set us behind us. Oh, we got to <laughs> tell that story, too. Yeah. yeah. There there you go. Come on up here, you guys. Hey, Steve, get in the picture here. We got to. <laughs> you got to. What does Captain Hook set mean? Well, I, I didn't actually <laughs> witness there. this story, but you guys said he kind of like set the hook like a muskie. What like happened, a, Josh? No, like he's starting a chainsaw, starting chainsaw. Yeah, and, and chain. broke our <laughs> line on one. But no, we've had, uh, we're, with the situation has been the last hour or two, we've had flags, but what's going on? 
Well, they're definitely negative. We've seen some that have actually grabbed and dropped. You can tell by looking at the minnows, and they put out a little line to the side. But uh, yeah, they're just they're just negative, John, and you can't afford to miss them. No. <laughs> what, what are you laughing at over here? Well, <laughs> just Ryan had a comment. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Feel any better? It was a funny comment. Uh, oh. oh, there we go. Hey. Yeah. I just said to Josh, you guys proved me that. That we can catch large amounts through yes, the ice can. and do a whole show. Look where he's got that metal. Turn yeah. him. Look at that. Yeah, he ate that one pretty good. We were talking about how they're generally been inactive, but that one, that one grabbed it pretty quick. Well, you know, in the summertime, you love that last hour before dark for yeah. largies, you know, oh, yeah. and maybe we'll get yeah. that today. Hey, look at that. Captain Hook said has got this one on. This is a great story of retribution. <laughs> hey, we gave him another chance. Hey. And there we yay. go. <laughs> now, you didn't break the line that time. No, we got this one. Now, can you tell us the hook set technique that you've learned? <laughs> it's gentle. I was I was accused of being a little too aggressive. Well, he's a musky fisherman, I folks. I see in there. It's and uh, he sets the hook on these little bass like it's a 40-pounder. And, no, you did a good job on that one. What happened? So the fight tripped and... Uh, yeah, I was actually, actually re-hooking the minnow. Yeah. And as I was cranking, putting the line back on the tip up, the fish actually came up and grabbed it. I watched him come across there and grab it. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's the middle was the middle was yeah. right there. Yeah. Got one more on here, Johnny. The evening bite. Yeah, we actually it, it was fairly slow slow all day, but this this has been a pretty good little flurry. Let's see what we got here. Well, he's not huge. We're definitely not getting big ones. But that is kind of interesting. You know, we start the day off with a four pounder. Yeah. And everything else has been in that what 14, 13 to 15 inch range. Yeah, it's funny how you know we talk about that a lot with all species, walleyes, muskies, bass, but uh, it's been pretty much all the same range today. A few bigger fish, but it's good to see these ones coming though. Uh, oh, Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's custom steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's custom steps, call 920-315-0333. Hi, I'm Pete Mena, and I think most people agree that rust sucks. What I use to help prevent rust and unrust things is Amsoil MP, Amsoil Metal Protector. Well, no trophies today, but we sure had a lot of fun. I, and, you know, Josh said before we probably had, what, 30, 40 flags when you think about it? Yeah, actually, it's weird when you don't have any real fast flurries. It seemed like it was one here, one there. But over the course of the day, we really did have a lot of action. And it's so neat to come back into these backwood lakes and, and even coming in on the logging roads is cool. And I want to thank you. I had a good time. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. The snow is beautiful. Oh, it is day. lovely. Winter wonderland. No. Oh, thank you, buddy. See you soon. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. Don't know we're going to fish yet, but we'll find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters, Waters and Woods. Woods.